Be welcome, sirs and ladies, to lesson one of the only vocal tutorial you'll ever need. In this video, I will be showing you the basics of the Vocaloid A5 editor. I will also show you a brief overview of the Cubase 4.5 integrated Vocaloid editor, since I use this one a lot. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm in my Cubase project here. Let's open up this Vocaloid project here. There we are. The Vocaloid 5 editor. Interface. This is the interface. So this interface can be used as a standalone or used as a plugin in your DAW. Let me tell you about this interface a little bit. On the top we have the drop down menus right here. You can open them all up. And below that we've got the tool, control and project settings section. Below the top section we have our timeline where we can visually see things like tempo changes and our bars. Below our timeline we can see our tracks. Here is where we make Vocaloid parts and insert audio. In the lower zone you can see all the rest of the features in Vocaloid. Here we will see the media browser, the mixer, the note editor and many more things. More on that later. Top section. Let me start by explaining all the functions in the drop-down menu. So let's start with file. With file we can get a new Vocaloid 5 editor project. Let's click on it. It asks if our data wants to be discarded and cannot be undone. Do you wish to continue? In this case, yes, we wish to continue. And here we go. Now we got a new project. Let me get rid of the bottom menu. You can also do this by pressing Ctrl N. The second option we have is export. So if we press this, you can see that we can export this as a .vpr file. So if we want to save this specific editor project, we can export it in this way. Control shift s to do it faster. We can also import a Vocaloid 5 editor file. As you can see here, it will look for a vpr file. But we could also insert a Vocaloid 3 or Vocaloid 4 file, which is a VSQX file. MIDI files can also be inserted. The next option is audio mixdown. The audio mixdown function is something you can only do when there is something actually here. So let me quickly do that for you. Let's say, uh -huh. let's say I want to export this. So now I have something actually going on. Uh -huh. A nice aha uh -huh as audio here. So let me go here, audio mixdown. And here you can see I can select multi-channel, so I could export this Vocaloid track and this audio track separately, or I could do the master track and then it exports these two together. You can see that it will automatically export it as a 44.1 kilohertz and with a bit depth of 16 bits. We can also make it bypass the effects plugins in the effect racks, which I will show you later. That's it for the file, but let's go to edit. In edit we have all the normal stuff like undo, which is Control z redo, <laughs> Control shift z cut, copy, paste, delete, duplicate, select all. As you can see, it selects everything all, and now we can actually cut, copy, undo, redo, <laughs> delete, and do stuff like that. What we can also do here is add a Vocaloid track. So let's do that. Here we go with another track and we can also add an audio track. The next one is job. We can import a tempo and a beat. So if we click here it will ask us to find a MIDI file. So if you have a tempo map laying around for your project and you wanted to insert it into a Vocaloid project this is a very easy way to do it. The next thing here is we can add an audio part to media. So I have an audio part here selected. And if I go to job, add audio part to media, it will ask us to add it to the media. So we can, in Vocaloid, there is um, like a media part that I will show you later where you can have presets ready. And here you can choose a type and a color of voice when you want to save it as a part to media. Same goes for, for Vocaloid. Notice that I can't edit the part to media now because we don't have anything actually singing now, which I will quickly do. I will very quickly just make a few notes. Actually, to simplify it, let me also get rid of these two tracks. This one and this one, yes. So now here we've got a little part playing. Yes. 
So if we go to job now, we can add this Vocaloid part that we selected to media and it will ask us the same, which tempo, which key, what do you want to name it, what's the type, and what's the color. Okay, let's go back. In job, we can also choose to export to audio file. So the Vocaloid that we selected now, we can also export it as a known file, a known WAV file. Another thing that we can do is also to normalize our audio waves. So as you can see here, if I select this one and I go back to job, if I press normalize audio wave, normalize means that the peaks of the audio will go to zero dB. So it will make everything louder. So let me normalize it. Boom, and the peaks, as you can see, are at zero and it's much louder now. Uh -huh. So that's what normalize audio waves means. Insert lyrics, we can do that as well here in our, in our part. Let me make sure that our singer is English first so I can insert some English lyrics. Now, if I select these notes, I can go to job and say insert lyrics or control I. I could say I love you, press OK, and here you go, it will sing I love you. I love you. Let me get rid of the bottom view again. And here we can also choose to convert phonemes to match the language. This is a little bit complicated, but imagine you have some English lyrics or phonemes and you want to convert those to Japanese or the other way around. With this little button, you can change the phonemes to make it match with this language that you're actually making Vocaloid songs for. The last one is the input lyric mode. You can choose to do letter mode or you can actually type phonemes and symbol in, in symbol mode. But I tend to stay with letter mode because it's easier to insert lyrics that way. Let's go to the next one, view. In view, you can uh, toggle the time signature view off, the tempo and also the master volume. So this can clean up your view a little bit or if you want to see more, we can also choose to see them again. You can also show or hide the lower zone, which uh, can also be done by pressing F4 on the keyboard, which is a way faster way to do it. You can also choose to collapse or expand audio effects or show or hide control parameters. This is talking about this part, which I will show you later here in the customize tab. Here you can actually uh, choose to not see the effects on the bottom. Show or hide control parameters is referring to in the musical editor. If we go to view, show or hide control parameters is this bottom automation parameters. Control P does the same thing. Let me press F4 to get rid of the bottom. Okay, settings. In settings, we can go to preferences. And in preferences, you can choose your vocal or track color. Personally, I like dark red. Our audio track color, let's change it to orange, for example. Or, no, let's not do that. Let's make it, let's make those bluish. You also have some other settings. The measure offset, which can change your measures right here. So if, for example, if I go to two, you can see here that the measures start at number three, measure three, and so on and so forth. Measure six. If I would just suggest you to put it on zero or on one, this way it will always start at track one, two, three, four, etc. This can be useful though, if, Imagine you have a Vocaloid track in your DAW and it starts at measure 60. Maybe in that case you want your editor to also start at measure 60. Then this is a very nice trick to keep everything clean and organized. Here in our settings we can choose what our default voice is. In this case I will choose our English Chris. We can make a check for new content upon launch, check for editor updates upon launch, and we can make the timeout more seconds, yes or no. This means that whenever there is a timeout in Cubase, it will check for this long on how when to refresh things. And lastly, we have help. This is actually a very useful tab because we can see this nice little thing here, but that's not very useful, but the reference manual is very useful. So now I opened up this manual, which opens automatically online, which is very useful. You can also open up tutorials. So now it opened up my vocaloid.com where I can check out some tutorials. What I can also very easily check for updates. Your software is up to date. That's what we want to see. Go for help, download new content, 
getting content information. And there we go, there is some new content. I will not download that now, but that's always nice to have maybe like some new presets and stuff like that. Another thing we can also do is open news. Here we can see newest releases, newest patches and so forth. And we can open Vocaloid.com itself. The other sections in the top menu are the sections that we will probably use the most. Here we have our tools section. We can choose an arrow. With the arrow you can just click and drag things. With the pencil tool we can actually draw in a new part. So for example here, I just drew a new part right here. With the cut tool we can cut parts and now we've created two separate parts here. With this little quantize button, you can make sure where to snip it to the grid. So now it's on, on one fourth. So let me grab the arrow key and move this around. You will see that it will actually snap to a quarter of a beat. But if I go to half, it will snap to half of a beat. And if I go to one, then the whole beat is what it will snap towards. Uh, to also show you one thing I forgot to mention, here in preferences I made this color track red, but you can see that this track is still blue, right? So that's not what we want, but we can make it another color right here, of course. But if I add a new one, add Vocaloid track, you can see that it automatically becomes red, the new color that we've chosen in settings. So let's go to this control section right here. Here you can actually loop, choose, a, choose to, it to loop, so let's make this loop part a little bit shorter. So here we can see that I made a loop. Let's see how that sounds. I love you, I love you. Great stuff. The auto scroller is also great. If we turn this off and we zoom in, zooming in by the way on your timeline is G and H, same as in Cubase. So let's zoom in a lot. So let's say that we want to go past bar four Let's play. So we will see it disappear from the screen. But if I press this auto scroller, boom, now we are following our timeline viewer. Okay, let's stop it. Let's go back to the beginning. If you press stop twice, it will go back to the beginning. So if you press play, you. it will play, stop, it will stop on the point where it was. Press it once again and we'll go back to the beginning. We can also record some parts. So here on record, if I press record I love you. and I would have a keyboard I attached to it, you. I could I actually record some Vocaloid MIDI parts like that. Here we have our project settings. So here you can see where the cursor is at the moment. So now it's at measure one. So here we see our tempo of the project and we see our time signature. Note that you cannot change it here. So in, for example, if you, ch if you type something here, it will just stay the same. This is because of the automations. So if I go to the automations, you will see here that the tempo is stuck on 120. But if I press it on now, now I can change it up here. And also the time signature now is also changeable here. There we go. Here, lastly, we have the performance tool. So as long as this is not going all the way to the right, you're in the clear because your performance is doing well and there will be no peaks or dropouts in your audio. Timeline section. So the timeline section is right here. It's actually fairly simple. Here we can see on the top, we can see our bars and we can also create a loop region by clicking and dragging this. Below this, we can see a time signature knob. If we change our time signature, for example, to three fourths, you can see that every bar now has three beats instead of four. Let me change it back to four four, which is the most common time signature in pop music. Here we have our tempo track. We can turn it off and on like this, and also actually increase the size of it like this. We can also automate our tempo. So let me grab the pencil tool and let me draw some changes in tempo. So now it gets faster. If I change the quantize settings, I can actually make the tempo change faster. That will actually also influence your Vocaloids. So if we make the tempo very fast, it will also, also sing faster. I love you. If we turn this off, it will just stay on one tempo. But for now, let me just go back by using Control Z and let's make our tempo 80, for example. 
I love you. Now our tempo is slower and our singer is also singing slower. Below that, we also have a master. So we can also increase the size or decrease the size by dragging this part. We can also, of course, automate this. If we want to do that, is to pick our quantize and just draw. There we go. And our volume will change. I love you. Beautiful. So that's the timeline section. Track section. Track section is fairly easy to use. You just have your tracks, your Vocaloid tracks and your audio tracks. On the track itself, you have the name. If you double click it, you can change the name. So we can turn this into Vocaloid. Example, lovely. Here we can change the color. We can mute it by clicking on this little M. We can solo it or we can record enable it. Now if we press record it will record this track only. Here you have the volume knob which can also be automated by clicking this little arrow and there you go your volume will appear. This is also automatable and also resizable so we can easily automate this as well. If we click it again it will disappear. Below that we have our panning so we can pan it to the left or to the right and of course, by clicking this, we can also automate it, the pan pot. All quite lovely. And this is the same for audio tracks as well. Panning and volume can also be automated, can be muted, can be soloed. Note that you cannot record audio in the Vocaloid 5 editor. You can only record Vocaloid parts with MIDI. Another great thing about the track tool is if you right click on the track tool here, you can quickly go to your arrow, pencil and scissor tools. You can also quickly use other options like select all or delete, cut, copy, edit part name, normalize. All the options I also showed you in these drop down windows can also be done by right clicking on the timetable. Musical editor. Let's get into the juicy stuff, shall we? Let's go into our musical editors. So let me get rid of this audio track here and let's also delete this part. I press on it and I press delete on my keyboard. Let's work with this part right here. If I double click on this part, it will automatically open our musical editor. And here we can see that we have a lot of new options. The musical editor is quite nice. You can see a classic piano roll and timeline. Note that the musical editor also has its own tool selections and it has a control section, a voice section, style section, and let me just explain what they all do. Of course, here you can press on a key and it will give you a sh little showcase. A little example. In this timeline, of course, you can see the notes, the actual notes that are being sung. I you can also select them like this. So we also have an arrow key, a pencil where we can draw in new notes Ooh. and a scissor tool, but the scissor tool doesn't really do anything on notes itself. But we do have a quantize field, so we can also choose to quantize notes. For example, Ooh. like this, it will only snap to two beats. And if I change it to one four, it will snap to Ooh. A whole beat like this. Mm. Then the control, the control tab. So if we press on this emotion tool, we can change the emotion of our singer. So our singer is now singing very blatantly, just very boring, like straight lines. I love you. I love you. He's just singing I love you, which is fine, but not really what we want. Let me make the tempo a little bit faster again. I love you. Exactly. So Notice that it was acting a little bit weird when my tempo was on 80. That's because my Cubase tempo is actually 120 BPM. So, of course, the Vocaloid editor will also play its beats in 120 beats per minute. So I need to keep this tempo the same as the tempo in my Cubase project. Something very easy to miss but important to keep in mind. Now it works fine. I love you. There you go. Let me go to this control panel. So the emotion tool, if I press this, this little yellow lines will appear. If I click on it, I can change these parameters. So if I go down here, it will sound very robotic, very, very clean in this transition here. I love you. But I can also make it 
very human like or very have it more of a dip i love you as you can hear it it's a little bit subtle in this case but it really goes up more natural like a human that would sing it here i can show you the same thing i love you I as you can hear it goes a little bit off pitch right there at the start so more like how a human would sing it Next to it, we have our tech and release edits. And this is what really makes I a lot of changes. You. So here, if we would say of this note of you, I love you. If we would say that I want it to go up slowly, so I could do that. So as you can see now with the yellow line here, it will move up slowly. So let's listen. I love you. I love you. Great. We can also make this harder more extreme i love you or we can make it very subtle i love you with the release effect we can add for example some nice vibratos let me here have a vibrato normal effect on it and again we can change if we wanted to make it very subtle i love you or make it very very extreme I love you, I love you. Lastly, we have the breath, the auto breath. So the auto breath will add breaths in between notes. So I need to add an extra note here. Now we should be able to hear some breath. I love you, <laughs> I love you. Very extreme. So let me make that a little bit less extreme so you can hear what it sounds like. I love you, Ooh, I love you, Ooh. You need to use this in combination with the emotion tool, because as, as you can see, if you turn off your emotion tool, you cannot see the breaths anymore. But with the emotion tool and the breath tool turned on, you can see here that there's a breath. On the top here, you can also see which singer you're using, which style it is singing with, and what's the name of the part that you're using. So the most important thing that a lot of people miss about the musical editor is the automation. So down here, you can click on this little arrow here and it will peep out this little automation bar. You can resize it like this. But here you have so many options. You have the velocity option where you can choose every note to have a certain velocity. So with the other ones, we can do a lot. For example, pitch bend. So let's, let's play around with pitch bend. So let's see let's change it up so we can make more fast changes and we will hear that the pitch will change i love you Ooh, i love you we could also change the pitch band sensitivity so now it's not very sensitive just going two whole tones but we could change this to 24 and now we will hear a very dramatic change in our pitch band automation I love you. We also have the exciter. I love you. Ooh, very, very sharp. Not in the growl, we can make our singer growl, growl. I love you. We can add airiness. I love you. Great for soft parts in your music. We can add some air as well. I love you. We can change the mouth shape. I love you. Beautiful. Can add the character so we can make it higher and lower. I love you. I the brightness up and down. Let's see how that sounds. I love you. Clearness. Let's see how clear we can go. I love you. And lastly, we have a portamento timing. So portamento means how the transition between two notes will sound so if we make this very low it will have a very lazy timing if we make it very high it will have a very early timing I love you. Ooh, I ah, love it's you. the other way around so this is a lazy timing and down there is a fast timing so that is the musical editor of vocaloid 5 very powerful very powerful stuff inserting lyrics inserting lyrics in vocaloid is very easy and there are three ways to do it the first way is to go to the job pedal right here. First, select the note you want to change. Go to job, 
and press insert lyrics. Now we could change it to you love you for example so we can press you on this note and it will change it to you and now it says you love you you can also select the whole part go to job insert lyrics and say you love me and we press ok and now it says you love me love me this feature is very, very useful for people that like to write their lyrics before starting to compose the music in their DAW. This way you can grab your lyrics from a separate text file and just insert it into Vocaloid. Ta-da! It will just show up on all your notes in your Vocaloid editor. So let me show you a different way to do it. The second way is to double click on the text below the note. So here you can see, now I've selected you and I can change it to Ma. So Ma loves me. Let's play it. Ma love me. Ooh. Ma love me. So I need to change this one to loves. Ma loves me. Ooh. Great. So you can insert a full text this way as well. So if I want to change it back again to I love you, so I could change, I could put I love you, and it will make it across the whole part. Just note that if I type in too much text, so I will say, I love you, my friend, then it will only say, I love you, my, because there is no note where we could sing friend. I love you, my, I no extra notes will be generated. The last way is the slowest way, but great for making changes later on. You can just click on a note separately like this and just change it to cry, for example. And the cool thing is that here you can also choose the phonemes. So what's a word that has different phonemes? Good. So these has two phonemes. See, you have good. 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 But you also have this, these phonemes. Good. good. So it sounds a little bit different. Let me make it a little bit more noticeable. Good. Good. But you also have the different one. Good. Good. It's very subtle, the difference, but words that can be pronounced differently, also uh, with different phonemes, it will actually show you below the lyrics itself when you double click it. That's super useful for making good Vocaloid lyrics. A very important thing to know is that you can spread out a word over multiple notes. This can be done by inserting a dash at the end of a word. This way a word will be sung towards the end of the next note. So for example here good, I wanted to sing good. good friend. So I need to insert another note, which I will do right here. Mm. And if I make it two notes I could la let someone sing friend over two notes mm. so let's do that i will insert here friend like this so as you can see the little dash where i put it goes to the next note and it will be sung over multiple notes that word i love you good friend i love you good friend voice panel so let's continue with the voice panel. Here in the voice panel, you can change the singer of your selected track. This is very easy. You can just choose your language. So in this case, I want to choose English. And then you can have the singers that you want. In my case, I have five singers. I have three Japanese singers. So Azuki, Kaori, and Ken. And I have two English singers, which are Amy and Chris. These are automatically included in the Vocaloid 5 editor when you purchase it. So for example, if I want to change this part to Amy, I double click on Amy and we can hear how Amy would sing this part. I love you, good friend. You can tell that this doesn't sound that great because Amy is a vocalist that shines a little bit better in the high register. So what we can do, we can just I shift and then arrow up and then everything will be sung an octave higher. And let's see how that sounds with Amy. I love you, good friend. I that sounds a lot better. Also in this voice panel, you can see which voice you've chosen and which style they are singing and the part name again. 
Style panel. The style panel. So the style panel is actually the most important tab in a way to tune your Vocaloid and to make it sound good. So the first thing you will see here is uh, which voice you're using again, which style and then your part name. But these are all certain presets. So we could say, well, for example, I want it to sound robotic and clean. Well, let, then we go for style preset clarity. And now we can hear that our vocal will sound differently. I love you, good friend. So now it sounds robotic and clear with clarity. It's great to quickly start out. Uh, if we want to work fast. But now that we've selected the preset, I will also show you how to customize the sound of your Vocaloid even further. Here in the bottom right of the style preset, we see the bottom customize. When we click this button, we are presented with a lot of extra options. The first little window we see is the singing scale of our Vocaloid. Here we can choose how powerful or clean a Vocaloid will sing. They also categorize these options under certain music styles that fit with the way vocals are usually sung in that style. Let me show you the differences. If I go to rock and powerful and I click it, now our Vocaloid will sound more powerful. I love you, good friend. I noticed that these changes are quite subtle, but they can make a good difference if you change them to your style. So you can change the skill of the vocalist and the amount of power. I love you, good friend. Note that when you want to activate an effect like this, you need to make sure that this little blue button is turned on. If you turn it off, this effect will not apply to your Vocaloid part anymore. So make sure that's turned on. Let me turn it off for now. Next, let's go to voice color. Here, of course, we can change the color of our voice. We can change the brightness, the growl, the breathiness, air, mouth, shape, and character of the voice. Note that these effects will apply to the whole track. So it's not automated like the functions in the automation panel. Let's see what it does to our sound when we tweak it. And I love you, good friend. 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 To the right of the uh, voice color, we have the robot voice. In this window, we can make the voice sound like a robot or more auto-tuned, if you will. So now this is the more subtle style, but if I turn it to the most extreme mode, you will hear it's very robotic. Now. I love you, good friend. Below this, we can change the default lyrics. So make sure to turn it on. And now we can change the default lyrics. So when we're creating new notes, now it will change it to ra or ru, anything else that you want. In the most right window is the breath window. In this window, we can choose the breath mode, the volume of the breath, and if the breath is male or female. Lastly, on the bottom of the style panel, we can add audio effects. By right-clicking on the sections, like this audio section, we can delete or add audio effects. So if I right click on an effect, I can delete them, but I can also add an effect here. So for example, let's add back a delay in this case, and then select it and you press OK. And there it is. The effects you choose can all be separately modified and even be put in your desired chain from left to right. So if I want to have my compressor behind my equalizer, I just drag it like this. And now the signal will go from left to right, first through my equalizer, then through my compressor, then through my chorus, and then through my delay. Media browser and mixer. Lastly, I want to talk about the media browser and the mixer. So here on the top right left, you have a media window. So here you can search for a preset. You can search for uh, Vocaloid parts and audio samples that are included by Yamaha with Vocaloid 5. Let me show you how quickly to find a preset and drag it into your track section. So let's choose one for Chris, English. Let's say, mm, let's say it's pitched. And let's say it's, a, it's very hard. So here we have, Nice, so we can drag that in here. And now it's very easily, we have it. Beautiful. Lastly, in the mixer part here, we can change our volumes. And we can also add 
audio effects on the master. So let's say, let's put this part down here. So now we have two Vocaloid parts and you can see we can change the volumes here as well. We can change the panning here as well. And we can even record enable them, mute them or solo them. Down here, we can add an audio effect. So let's add an equalizer and see what happens when we tweak around it. So I can take away the low. Take out the high swell. Let's also add a delay. And we can turn them on and off by pressing these buttons once again. Thank you again for watching, it's always a pleasure. I hope you can use these tips in your own productions to get you started. Please keep making lots of magical music. Next time I will be covering how to apply music theory to your Vocaloid tracks. I'll see you all in the next video. Always at your service, Jeremy Dorian. Don't forget to subscribe to the